Momentum Portraits of Women in Motion uh, was an idea that I had for an album. This was something that I felt I really wanted to do, which was to pay tribute to women heroes of mine, and in a, a range of areas, uh, obviously in music, but also in sports, and in politics, and environmental advocacy, and social justice. So what was fun was to pick women that I really mattered to me, and who had made a difference in my life from the time I was you know, eight or nine on up till now, and write music for them. So each piece in the album is a tribute to a woman or a particular group of women uh, who've had some impact in my life and I think deserve to be honored. Uh, so the first thing that sort of jumped off my pencil uh, when I had my sabbatical leave last year uh, was a piece for Michelle Obama. And uh, obviously these are very interesting political times we're in. And she has just been a hero to so many young women and so many older women uh, that regardless of political affiliation, I thought she would be a great person to uh, pay tribute to. So uh, the very first piece that I wrote um, is called The First Lady and is a, a tribute to Michelle Obama. And the style description says, graceful yet funky. So that is The First Lady. In some of the readings I was doing about race and social justice, I just came across uh, really incredible women who had done things that I had no idea about. They had started NAACP chapters, they had started schools, they had started colleges, they had been in the forefronts of the uh, marches, uh, civil rights marches, and yet we don't, we don't hear about them. Um, women like Fannie Lou Hamer and Amelia Boynton and Septima Clark and Mary McLeod Bethune, and I just thought, where, where are these women? We need to know about these women. I need to know about these women, and certainly uh, young women, and part of this project, of course, involves mentoring. Uh, I want to be able to talk about these women uh, when I go out and play this music. Uh, so this piece, Ain't I a Woman, uh, and I did basically appropriate the title from Sojourner Truth's autobiography, is a tribute to, to all of them. So, of course, uh, I had to pay tribute to some of my female heroes, both jazz piano and, and pop rock people that I grew up listening to. Uh, and one of the pieces that has uh, so much meaning for me is a piece that I wrote in honor of the late, great Jerry Allen, a wonderful jazz pianist, uh, mentor to me and great friend, and her mentor, uh, Mary Lou Williams. Um, I'm not sure if mentor is the right word, but someone who she, uh, whose music she championed and who she cared about deeply, uh, who she was influenced by. Uh, so there's a piece that is tentatively titled The Soul Keepers, uh, that is kind of a, I tried to, use both uh, the Boogie Woogie style that Marine Williams uh, was fairly famous for, but also add a, a very contemporary harmonic touch that pays tribute to Jerry. So trying to meld sort of 19, or 2010 uh, with 1940. Anthem is a tribute to Carole King and Joni Mitchell and Judy Collins, who I grew up listening to, um, and who were also very important to me in formative ways as a composer and a pianist. One of the pieces I wrote is a tribute to Joan Benoit Samuelson, who uh, was the winner of the first Olympic marathon when they finally decided it was okay to let women run the marathon distance, uh, which happened about 40 years too late. So uh, one of the pieces I wrote um, is called Relentless Forward Progress, which is the ultra runners credo, that you just keep putting one foot in front of the other, regardless of how you're feeling. Uh, and then the other piece uh, is called Game, Set, and Match, and I dedicated that to Billie Jean King and Martina Navratilova. I grew up in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Ridgefield is on the southeast corner of Connecticut, where Connecticut makes the bend. It's right on the New York border, uh, and it's uh, fortunately close enough to New York City that I was able to get in and go to jazz clubs when I was younger. Oh, after I graduated from Ridgefield, Ridgefield High School, um, I went to the Eastman School of Music in Rochester, New York, uh, where I was just about one of the only women involved in playing jazz. <laughs> so uh, an important mentor to me, uh, who I actually paid tribute to in other pieces I've written, was Mary Ann McPartland, the great jazz pianist. And you've appeared on her program. Yeah, she was gracious enough to have me on her show twice, which was definitely career highlights for me to be on Piano Jazz. Uh, I'm teaching now at the University of Michigan, where I've been for 20 years, and previously I was at the University of Connecticut, which was very nice. Back in my home state, I had a chance to start a jazz program there and uh, kind of get my feet wet in education, and they let me find my way, which was uh, very nice of them. Uh, and then I left Connecticut to come out to Michigan. So one of the pieces that I wrote when I was uh, at the UCross Foundation, which uh, was a beautiful artist colony in northeast Wyoming, uh, was a piece based on the song of the Western Metal Arc. I had a cabin uh, just out on the high, high plains area and I had creeks running in the back of it and I would walk out my door and I'd hear all kinds of bird song. 
and one that was particularly interesting to me was the metal arc, western metal arc, because we don't have them here in Michigan. And as best as I could have uh, transcribed it, it went something like... So I decided to write a piece just based on that uh, song, and it's a tribute to my mother who got me interested in bird art on it. Nice. And two women who uh, are such heroes of mine are Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall. And uh, Diane Fossey, of course, gave her life in pursuit of protection of the mountain gorillas, and uh, Jane Goodall has been an amazing advocate for chimpanzees and gorillas and much of the wildlife in Africa. And uh, I'm such, such a fan that I, I had to write a piece for them, and this piece is called The Guardians. So the composition process is, is pretty interesting. Sometimes um, I'll just sit down at the piano and I'll be thinking about the subject matter and a melody and some chords just just kind of come to me and, and then I can spin it out from there. Uh, and sometimes that's just based on an emotion. Uh, when I first got to the BAMP Center for the Arts in Canadian Rockies where I had my first residency and wrote a portion of the album, uh, it was January 1st and uh, we were starting on a, a whole new time in the politics and the life in the, in the country. And it was dark, I, I turned the lights off, and I just had you know stars coming through the windows, and um, the opening for Ain't I a Woman just kind of fell into my fingers, as, as it were, and um, that felt great, because that was uh, a vibe and a spirit that I was looking for, and that basically just spun itself out into a song fairly easily. So that those those are the happy moments when something just occurs to you. And then other things are just based on an emotion. The Guardians uh, was coming from a place of deep sadness. Uh, and, you know, so I, as in <laughs> Spinal Tap, it's such a sad chord. It's not D minor, which is the saddest key, but E minor, which is almost as sad. So, um, so I was writing in the key of E minor, and, and the melody kind of came out of that. So I recorded the music uh, for Momentum in three days uh, in Ann Arbor at the audio studio connected to the University of Michigan. And it was great because I was able to invite some of my very favorite women artists, people who I've either recorded with in the past, like Ingrid Jensen, the great trumpet player, uh, or people who live uh, in this area and uh, I've worked together or traveled with, like Marion Hayden, the great bass player from Detroit. Uh, or people I've taught at jazz camps with, um, like the saxophonist Tia Fuller, uh, who also performs with Beyonce and uh, is uh, just so much fun and such a great player. Uh, and players that I had uh, met in the Diva, all women big band, uh, who I had not had a chance to see or play with uh, for some years now, like Lisa Perrot, Barry Sachs, an alto player, Virginia Mayhew, a wonderful tenor player. And then a drummer I've just gotten to know in the last might be five or six years, uh, Allison Miller, who has come through town with her own band and plays at Edgefest in Ann Arbor regularly and uh, is just an incredible musician. And then also a woman I met at the uh, Illinois Allstate where I was conducting, uh, Marlene Rosenberg, a bass bassist who's based in Chicago. Uh, and to get the chance to bring all these women in one spot, ah, and I almost forgot, uh, our alumnus in the University of Michigan Jazz Program, uh, Melissa Gardner. Incredible trombonist living in Syracuse. So one of the biggest pieces uh, of the picture here for me with this project is that uh, I want to take the band, as many players as possible, out on the road with me, and we want to perform the music, but more importantly, we want to perform the music with young women musicians in high schools and colleges uh, around the country, hopefully even outside the country, uh, and we want to have a chance to mentor them. There's not as many young women playing jazz as we would like, uh, and not only do we want to mentor them in terms of playing the music and becoming jazz, possibly becoming jazz musicians, but we want to make sure they know about all these important women uh, heroes and what they've contributed, and to encourage them to think outside the box and aggressively go after what they want. So while I'm very, very excited to get the music out there and get the, the CD put out and the music out online, uh, I think it's even more important to me that my band goes out on the road and has a chance to reach into communities and uh, do educational outreach with these young women. Road is that we intend to have discussions with the audience and also at uh, clinics and master classes about uh, issues concerning race and sexuality and gender, specifically in jazz, but probably in other areas as well. 
Uh, one of the issues that's interesting to me is why there aren't more young women of color uh, playing jazz. And I know that players in my band are also interested in talking about that. Uh, and we're hoping that this will be provocative uh, and that the music will make people think, but that we can also have some good discussions around the music as well.